Uh, what was your startup stage like? The startup stage is, you know, now everybody thinks it's the new idea, but in reality, a lot of the times, it's just you think you do a better job. I went into the picture framing business because I liked it. I'd done it in high school and college, and I thought I could do a better job with it because what I saw was out there was slow delivery, mediocre selection, and mediocre service. So. I thought I could make a living at it. This was 1978, entrepreneurship was not a word that was being used back then, and I didn't get any big send off. When I graduated with an accounting degree, everybody said to me, you're gonna waste your degree? I heard that a hundred times. And, and not I, just from your mother, right? No, my mother went to the next step. I went, came home one day, and it was extremely stressful, it really was. I didn't know what to do, should I go into business? This is what, wasn't what you were supposed to do in 1978. You were supposed to go to law school. And I came home and I said, Mom, I decided I'm gonna go into the picture framing business. She, she took a big sigh and said, ah, you went to school for four years and you ended up like your father. <laughs> and I can't even tell you it bothered me. I was so numbed already from hearing it from everyone else. I figured, whatever. And I went into business and business grew like crazy. For, for you know, adult, the first year I did $120,000, which back in 1978 was a lot of business. The next year I did 240. The average frame shop in America today does $180,000 a year. I was doing 240 my second year in, two, in, in 19. How do you explain that? Uh, because it, it, the irony is I worked in my father's dime store. Anyone know what a dime store is? The wood floor, the tin ceiling, my grandfather, my grandmother, my aunt, my uncle, my father. I grew up from when I was five years old taking care of customers. I didn't know any different. And that was a complete 180 degrees from what the typical picture frame shop was. They were, they were artists, and you'll get it when they're ready. And call me, we'll see if it'll be done. I took care of customers. I just was always customer driven. I was customer driven before that phrase was really popular. And I always worked hard to have the better, better selection and better people, and it grew real fast. I moved into the throw-up stage for, frankly, 15 years of being out of control. I, I, did, I never managed anyone. I never hired anybody. And I went through 15 years of, I wasn't mentored, I was tortured. I mean, hiring, firing, hiring, firing, problems, delivering, it's apologizing. And it was extremely stressful and extremely time consuming to say the least. And um, that went on for probably 15 years until I finally caught up to myself. I mean, now I have 110 employees and I have less grief today by far than when I had five employees. I mean, there's no comparison. I actually have a life now. I can actually come in when I want, leave when I want, and, it, and it's somewhat running itself. Write blog posts for me. Right, exactly. Uh, and, and in between, it just took me a lot of years to figure out, you know, how are you supposed to run a business? And the biggest shock was, which I try to help people with regularly, is there's no job description for the boss. <laughs> and people just don't understand what being the boss is. And that's a huge problem.